Welcome to 100 North Carrollwood in the heart of Los Angeles, where Michael Jackson spent his final months. And in true Jackson style, the grounds are gorgeous, eclipsed only by the beauty inside. How are you? Welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Yeah, thanks for having me. Come yeah. on in. Showing us around, that's Darren Julian and Martin Nolan from Julian's Auction House, preparing to sell everything in here. The decor is majestic. Michael lived in this mansion as he was rehearsing for his upcoming tour. And as you look around, Michael's fingerprints are everywhere. As soon as you get to the top of the stairs, you're greeted in this beautiful giant foyer with high ceilings and, of course, a piano. Michael loved his music. He has a huge collection of pianos here and at Neverland. But the real interesting section of this house, right through these doors, this is Michael Jackson's private bedroom. And when I say private, I mean ultra private. Michael's children weren't even allowed here. Not his assistants, not his security guards, no one. This was for Michael only. This was his bed. And by the way, Michael Jackson didn't enjoy sleeping in a king. This is a California queen. Something else that jumped out at me, he has a sitting area in the bedroom here as well. And for somebody who was so huge in the entertainment industry, no huge flat screen TV for Michael Jackson. This was his television set, a, a fairly standard model. But the real prize in the auction when they start selling off Michael's items may be this armoire. And you can see that Michael actually hand wrote something on the mirror. So every time he looked at himself, he would see this. Train perfection, March, April, full out, underlined, May. And a little stick figure uh, that he drew on the bottom. Michael was so desperate, many say, for this comeback and for this tour. He wanted to see that motivational message every time he looked at the mirror. And by the way, how much money would this mirror go for? We no. estimate the Amor to be six to 8,000. That's if you or I owned it, because it's Michael Jackson's. And because of what he wrote here, he desperately wanted to make a comeback. This was a constant reminder to him. How much will it go for then? It could be 40, 50,000. And that's part of the point here, Darren, right? That this is Michael's inner sanctum and everything goes for more money. That's exactly right. Yeah. Anything in here will sell for more money because these are part of his private life that no one else got to see. How much of this is for sale? Well, everything in the house that's movable is for sale. Right through here is Michael's personal bathroom. And again, this is all part of that master suite that is so private. Only Michael was allowed in here. So big, it can fit a tub and a chaise lounge right in the middle. Uh, there's something very interesting right through here. And his shower, by the way, is enclosed in double-sided glass. It's this shower bench. And you, you can see, if you look up close, Michael drew those thick figures on every piece of wood on this shower bench. And this is for sale, too. And then right through here, as you go out the other side, this is Michael's, well, I guess this would be his closet. <laughs> it, would be a, it would be an apartment in New York City for most people. And we're told in his final days, this room was literally stacked with his belongings. Every closet was filled. Every tabletop was filled with stuff. Michael loved accumulating stuff, and he kept a lot of it right in here. Of all the rooms in the house, this one has the most meaning. It's been called the medication room. This is where Michael Jackson spent his final moments. In fact, it's in this very bed where Michael Jackson spent his final moments. And this bed is going up for auction soon. This is how we're used to seeing the medication room, from crime scene photos taken just after Michael died. And it was a mess. Pill bottles everywhere, pillows thrown around. There's even a doll in the middle of the bed. Dr. Conrad Murray administered the propofol right here at Michael's bedside. Of course, this is a piece of history now. Yeah, I mean, like his inner sanctum, anything in this room is going to have more value. Um, but the bed, we can certainly estimate three to 5000 That's what the value is of a bed. But because it's a historical significance in this room, it's going to be far greater. Do you expect to get perhaps the most money for this particular item of everything? Uh, we anticipate it being one of the top selling items, yes. Just down the hall, more bedrooms, lavish and spacious. It's believed Michael's children, Prince, Paris, and Blanket slept here. In fact, you can see the kids everywhere. Prince carved his name into this candle. And this is the kitchen, and this is where the family spent much of their time uh, during the day. I mean, a kitchen that's very similar to what they lived in at Neverland, a home that was filled with love, and that's represented here on the chalkboard. I love daddy. Smile. It's free. 
the kids wrote that and it's still, it's still here. Daddy. The chalkboard with that message is up for auction too. Also downstairs, a living room, a formal dining room. And just like Neverland Ranch, this mansion has a fully functional movie theater, complete with velvet seats. Michael didn't own this home. He rented it, fully furnished. The homeowner, no relation to the Jackson family, wants to remain anonymous. She and the auction house will share profits when the items sell. Wow, when you step outside, it is beautiful here. Yeah, and Michael always liked private surroundings that were immaculate. And this is immaculate, Michael's own private oasis. Greenery, his protection from the outside. The pool, the pool house, all part of Michael's life in those final months. But even this mansion suited for a king couldn't cure this king's pain.